Hello, welcome to the Calyptix Gatekeeper video walkthrough. I'm Aaron. I'm going to be showing you how to set up and administer uh, our new feature called Gatekeeper. I'm also going to be showing you how to use it as an end user. Uh, so first things first, what is Gatekeeper? Um, Gatekeeper is a new tool that uh, we've developed here at, at uh, Calyptix that allows admins to uh, give remote users secure access to internal resources. Um, so uh, in uh, our immediate use case, uh, it's uh, RDP. So we can uh, grant users RDP access without uh, exposing our RDP servers permanently over port forwarding, um, things like that. Uh, so how do we do that? Uh, we, we use single use short-lived firewall rules uh, which come into existence when the user clicks a, a link, uh, or a connect button on our browser, or I'm sorry, on our uh, uh, at gatekeeper user portal. Uh, uh, and as soon as they establish their connection, the firewall rule vanishes. Uh, and the, the rule is also bound to their IP address. So uh, it only listens on a specific port for connections from their IP. Uh, so someone port scanning from another network or something like that won't see uh, an open port. Uh, we also uh, add on multi-factor authentication to your Active Directory. Uh, and we do this without the need for installing any applications or uh, configuring anything uh, on the Active Directory side of things. Um, uh, and then we allow admins to create uh, simple rules uh, that are, are easy to understand and, and um, quick to create. Uh, they, they uh, basically are grant user A access to machine B, uh, and you can do multiple users to a single machine, uh, stuff like that. So that's what Gatekeeper is. Uh, so in this video, uh, we are going to go over creating a portal, uh, which is the portion of Gatekeeper that uh, will tell the access enforcer how to communicate with your Active Directory and, and what the end users will go to to you know to visit the the access enforcer I'm sorry the uh, the gatekeeper interface uh, we're going to invite users uh, which is pulling in users from Active Directory uh, and and establishing them as users of uh, gatekeeper and then we're going to create some rules which is granting those users access to resources inside the network and finally we're going to actually log in as one of our users uh, and uh, uh, see how things play out. Uh, so we're going to be creating two rules. Um, both are going to grant RDP access. One will be for our admins, Jack and Jill, uh, and that gets them access to our Active Directory server. And then the second rule will be for Jim, which is going to give him access to QuickBooks. Uh, and so let's get started. Um, first things first, log into your Access Enforcer. Um, and our, our new feature lives under security and gatekeeper. Uh, so uh, first, uh, before we before we actually create the, the portal, let me go over a few things about uh, uh, what you'll need before you uh, actually create one. First thing you'll need is Active Directory. Uh, that's how users authenticate. So we need an Active Directory server that your Access Enforcer can talk to to be able to authenticate those users. Uh, the second thing you'll need is a domain name that uh, you control. In our case, we're using abcproservices.com um, uh, and it's already configured and pointed at the access enforcer. Uh, third thing you'll need is a SSL certificate uh, that is valid for the name that you're using. Um, for this video, our certificate is already installed and configured as you can tell by the padlock. Uh, creating that and installing it is outside of the scope of this video. Maybe we'll do another one. Um, so that's what you're going to need. Uh, now let's go ahead and create one. So these are our sample values. Let me go ahead and punch them in. Pro services. And our domain. Oops. Our server is 192.168.51 dot five four and our domain is abc.local okay that's all the info that's needed for 
talking to the to the server now let's talk about the uh, connection information so uh, here you can specify different kinds of, of encryption to use uh, TLS or uh, start at TLS we're gonna uh, for this example we're going to be using none but I want to talk about these parameters real quick the TLS version uh, basically this one you want to pick the highest that's available um, when you're using TLS uh, TLS one is really old and, and really insecure. You don't want to be using it. Uh, this option, uh, verify the Active Directory server certificate. Let's say you're using SSL on your Active Directory instance, but it's got a self-signed certificate. Uh, in that case, uh, anytime you, you're talking to it, the Access Enforcer isn't going to know uh, that that's a valid cert. Uh, so you would set this to no, um, and then it will skip the cert validation it's not ideal, uh, but uh, oftentimes it's needed for, you know, different environments. Uh, in our case, this is a two machine network, uh, so we're gonna use no encryption. Uh, in production, you will definitely wanna be using encryption. Uh, and that's it for the uh, portion that, that communicates with your uh, Active Directory. This side is all of the information that end users will, um, or th this is the configuration for the, the bits that the end users will use. Um, so uh, basically the, the end user URL is what they're gonna be typing into their browser to get to Gatekeeper. Um, and so we're gonna use uh, our abcproservices.com domain, uh, and then we're gonna give it a, um, a little path at the end. So let me type that in real quick. And we're gonna go with remote And we're gonna make a copy of this and save it for later, just for fun. This option uh, is for specifying your SSL certificate. Uh, since we already have one installed and configured, we're going to use the one that's already on the Access Enforcer. Uh, if you have one that you wanna use, um, say you're using a different domain than what's on the Access Enforcer, you can upload a, a, your own certificate here. Uh, this parameter is a enrollment password and this is a piece of information that you'll that the admins will have to share with um, end users who are invited into gatekeeper uh, and this is kind of a stopgap that we we use to uh, prevent um, prevent people from uh, kind of breaking the enrollment process or uh, uh, you know falsifying themselves as someone else uh, so we're gonna go ahead and set a password here and we'll just make it password one and then we'll make a note of that real quick okay so let's go ahead and save this portal so as you can see there's some ongoing activities um, your access enforcer is uh, configuring the the web server and uh, doing a number of other things in the background uh, so we'll let it do that for a second and our next step is going to be uh, managing users. Um, so we'll give it a sec. All right, here we go. Uh, manage users. So first thing we need to do is invite some users. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty simple process for the admins. Um, they need to create at least one invite. Uh, then they'll need to share the enrollment password that they've they've created for the, the end users um, with the end users uh, and then you'll also need to share a url which i'll, I'll talk about in more detail in a second uh, so let's go ahead and get some users invited uh, first things first thing we need to do is log in as a user an active directory user that can see uh, all of the users in active directory uh, so if we're going to use administrator um, okay, and we're going to retrieve our user list. All right, so this step, um, this step is enrolling the admin account in multi-factor authentication, uh, and we we require this for any of the uh, users that are are put onto the the access enforcer. Uh, so, um, so just an added security layer. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and scan this QR code um, and uh, 
you can use a number of apps to, to scan it. Uh, Google Authenticator is a good one. Authy is another. Um, uh, but once you scan it, uh, you'll be presented with a rotating one-time password. Um, it's six or six numbers long, uh, and it changes every 30 seconds. Uh, so I've got mine now that I've scanned the QR code. So I'm going to go ahead and oops, punch it in. Uh, it's eight three six one three five. Okay, so here are all of the users in our Active Directory. Um, and if you remember, we were going to invite Jack and Jill, who are admins, and Jim, who is our QuickBooks guy. So let's go ahead and select those and prepare our invites. And we'll go ahead and invite users. Okay. Oops. So now we have our users uh, invited. Um, we have to actually share the invite information with them now. Uh, and there's a number of ways that you can do it. Uh, you can download a CSV, which will contain all of the pieces of information within here. Um, let's look at that real quick. So here's the URL and, and the email address for the users and their username. Um, you could also click uh, a link here that will auto-populate an email that you can send. Um, and it, it gives a little bit of an explanation as to what their next steps are things like that. So that's pretty handy. Uh, and then the third option is uh, copy to a, uh, copy the URL to your clipboard. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to use that method uh, real quick. So we're going to copy Jim and we're going to put this over here in our handy dandy buffer. Um, okay. So next let's talk about what the end users are going to see. Uh, so um, first thing they're going to do is visit the URL that we give them, which will be this guy, either by email or um, from our clipboard. Then they're going to be prompted for the uh, enrollment password, uh, which is this. So they'll need these two pieces of information uh, out of the gate. Uh, and then during that process, they'll have to enroll in multi-factor authentication like we did for the admin account. Um, so I'll, I'll go into more detail on each one of these in a second. Um, but one thing to note, um, these two pieces of information, the, the email or the, the copied URL to your clipboard, they need to be shared out of band uh, from the, the password that you're sharing, sharing with them. So you would want to email the URL and then possibly uh, text or chat them the, the password. Uh, the reason you, you would want to do that is you don't want uh, someone who intercepts that email to be able to um, pretend that they're Jim and, and uh, enroll uh, and set up two-factor. Um, it ends up being kind of a denial of service in, in that case, in that scenario. Uh, so make sure you, you share those pieces of information separately. Uh, okay, so our next step is to create our rules. So let's go back to Gatekeeper. Uh, and here you can see the manage rules link. Um, so here we are. Uh, let me get to my next slide. So we're going to create two rules. Uh, one is for our admins and the other one is for QuickBooks access. Uh, so let's go ahead and start creating one. We'll do uh, 80. 80 admin. Uh, this this option is interesting. Um, our our public port style. We have two two options to select from: piggyback on the Gatekeeper UI port, uh, and use a random port between one and sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five. Uh, piggybacking. This is the interesting piece. So say you're on a a network like uh, that's fairly restricted, like a, a at an airport or something like that. A lot of times they prevent uh, outbound access on uh, non-standard ports. So uh, something on port 3389 would be pr probably prohibited, but something on port 443 would most likely be able to go through. Uh, so this option uh, was, was added specifically for that scenario. Uh, so piggybacking will reuse uh, port 443 on the gatekeeper UI uh, to allow RDP access. Uh, so this this can be kind of handy. Um, 
The other option does exactly what it says. It'll pick a random port between 1 and 65,535. Uh, and the, the access enforcer is uh, intelligent in its picking of the port. It won't use one that's already in use. Uh, so that's quite handy. Uh, so we're going to piggyback for this uh, scenario. So let me go ahead and punch in this information. 192.168.51. Whoops, uh, five four three three eight nine. Right? Five one five four. Yep, okay. And these are our administrators, uh Jack and Jill. Um you can select multiple uh users by holding um control or command, a uh, command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on Windows. Uh and uh yeah. Um that's it for this. So let's save that rule. Okay, let's create our rule for Jim. So we'll call this one QB Jim. Again, we're going to use the piggyback. Uh, and on this one, our IP address is 192.168.51.33. And our port is 3389. 3333. Okay. And this one is just going to be for Jim. So we'll save that rule. Okay. So now that we've gone through all of the admin steps, um, let's go ahead and look at what it looks like for an end user. Uh, so um, let's pretend that I'm, I'm uh, Jim and I've received these pieces of information, remember, separately. Um, so I'll open up a new browser and Let's copy this and enroll ourselves and, and pretend we're using Gatekeeper. This is our password, password one. Okay, so we are now enrolled and we can go ahead and log in. Uh, so this is gonna be Jim and our super secret password. Okay, here's the user end uh, enrollment that I talked about before. Uh, let me open up my app and scan this QR code. Okay, and our numbers are 088944. All right, so here is our rule uh, that, that gives Jim QuickBooks access. If we'd given Jim more rules or uh, added him to, to this rule, uh, he, that that would also show up here. Uh, so now uh, Jim can go ahead and bookmark this URL uh, and he can come here whenever he wants to uh, log in and, and connect to the, the QuickBooks server. Um, so uh, it, he won't be prompted for doing the, the enrollment of the, the multi-factor authentication. Uh, he won't be presented with a QR code. Next time it'll be a uh, just a, an input field for the, the six digits. Um, so let's go ahead and connect and see what happens. So we've been given our RDP file, which means our, our rule on the, on the uh, access enforcer has been created. So let's go ahead and connect. And we're being prompted for username and password. Um, let's see. Okay, we have a self-signed cert. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and accept it. Excellent. And as you can see, we are connected. It's running a little bit slow. But there you go. Uh, so that's... Uh, oh, we kind of talked about that. One thing to note... Um, if your uh, rule is set to use a random port, the RDP file that um, is downloaded, are ba it's basically one use uh, because uh, every time they connect, that port number is going to change. So the, the old RDP files won't be valid. Uh, so uh, you'll want to inform the users of that. They won't be able to reuse the, the RDP file. Um, and that's it. Uh, for more information, you can check out our online portal. Um, we have a bunch of articles there um, talking about how to configure 
uh, gatekeeper. Uh, there's one on how to use it with Active Directory and IPsec. Um, we go into more detail about inviting users and um, managing them, um, stuff like that. There's also a, a quick setup tutorial that you can go through. It's basically the same thing that's in this video, but uh, in, in text format. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, that's it. Thanks for watching.